I always wanted to, you know, be mentioned with the great big men. But when I met Mr. Mikan, Mr. Mikan was treating me like I was the legend. No, seriously. Where he'd come, he came, and he'd, you know, nice, nice older fellow, and he's like, Shaq, how you doing, sir? Can I have your autograph? And I'm like, Mr. Mikan, you want my autograph? I should be asking you for your autograph. He's like, no, man, you're the greatest big man I've ever seen. And I actually, like, brought, like, a little, you know, tear to mine. The first dominant big man saying, I'm the best big man, when actually he's the best big man. Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain were the most dominant figures in the era and two of the greatest big men in NBA history but I wanted to see if there was a legendary center before them because not that many will go back further than Bill and Wilt. But the bigger question I want to find out is who was the first NBA player everybody recognized as a superstar and when I did my research I was shocked at how he is rarely mentioned when talking about the greatest players in the history of the NBA but I had to remind myself that this was when Bill Russell was watching him as a kid in high school and this was the early stages of the NBA, so it is way harder to talk about these types of players. But this man needs recognition because he was pronounced the greatest player of the first half century. The man's name is George Mikan, and he may resemble your favorite substitute teacher from high school, but he epitomizes the saying, looks can be deceiving. He was a professional basketball pioneer and the first dominant big man in the history of the NBA. He transformed the game dominated by big men in his day with his size and play. Mikan was known for his amazing rebounding and shot blocking skills. His ambidextrous hook shot that you will hit over his smaller defenders was the product of the universal Mike and drill, performed by many legends like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Shaquille O'Neal. George Mikan was so dominant in the NBA that he was responsible for several key rule changes, including establishing the goaltending rule, the enlargement of the foul lane, known as the Mikan rule, and the invention of the shot clock. He was a member of the Minneapolis Lakers, now known as the Los Angeles Lakers, who he led to five championships in a seven-year career, and he was one of the toughest guys in the history of the NBA. In the 1951 playoffs, Mikan played with the metal plate taped to his broken leg, and then once his team got to the Western Division finals against the Rochester Royals, Mikan could hardly move all series long, and even though they lost that series 3-1, he still averaged 20 points. And you might notice that George Mikan's field goal percentage was super low, but that was the league average. The majority of players back then couldn't touch 40%, but there are a bunch of factors that play a role in that. For example, basketballs weren't made properly until the late 1950s, so they were often lopsided and not round, making it harder to dribble and shoot. And referees used to allow a lot of pushing holding and hand checking which disrupted shooters and the arenas were poorly maintained this is why it's so difficult to compare players due to their era you had a guy like george mikan who dominated their time in the nba adapted to all the regulations thrown at him and revolutionized the game in many ways for the future generations he also impacted the basketball world off the court before the merger he was the first aba commissioner a rival league to the nba and mikan was personally responsible for the aba three-point line which the nba soon adopted in 1979. George Mikan is an NBA icon and I want to show you NBA legends that watch him play and players from different eras that show their appreciation towards Mr. Basketball. Enjoy the video man. Well ever since the Lakers came into being back in Minneapolis, Super Centers meant Super Team. It began with big George Mikan. There was only one George Mikan. To Mikan in the pivot and the big center dribbles in and scores. It's not only his size, but his extraordinary skill as well that makes him the biggest star in the game. The Laker team to the Mikan era founded the first pro basketball dynasty. Mikan recovers and he scores as the Lakers become the champions. With number 99 in the pivot, the Lakers won five league championships in six years. My first basketball hero was a guy named George Mikan, who was the first really superstar in NBA basketball. And I went to see him play. And after the game, he came out of the locker room and walked over to me and talked to me for 20 minutes. And at the time, I was third string varsity. He would just talk to a young basketball player. I was six, seven then. He ended the conversation by saying, you got to come and play for the Lakers. And I think there were less than half a dozen kids in my graduating class that went to college. So at that time, we were not expected to go to college but he expressed expectations of me. And outside of my family and my high school coach, there's nobody else that ever said anything like that to me. That we expect you to be successful. To you about the hook shot. A lot of people seem to think that the hook shot is uh, from the older days of basketball and 
of not much use today, and I definitely don't agree with that. It's really helped make my career, and uh, it's the type of shot that anybody who plays in the pivot should know about and be able to, to execute. So the, the first drill that I always learned in, in shooting the hook shot was uh, originated by George Mikan, and it helped him with his coordination and with positioning his hands for the shot. And uh, it's a very simple drill. You're just going to shoot a, a little baby bank hook shot from right in front of the rim with both your right hand and your left hand, and you alternate. This is a very simple drill. It's done like this. You know, then there's the guys that we didn't see, uh, the guys that played on, uh, let's say, the first dominant team, uh, Laker team, George Mikan and his team. Those are some really fantastic guys that dominated in those eras, and we have no idea how, how good they were or how they would stack up against our guys today. Uh, so, you know, it's hard. I, I think you have to judge these things in eras and, uh, you know, just let it go at that. <laughs> you know, I met him twice, right before games. That's what I do. That was my enthusiasm. And that was good coming from someone who totally set the tone for guys like myself. Because I am a big man. Um, I know I know my history. I know sort of the footsteps that I've stepped in on my way through this fast journey. He was six, seven, seven foot, size of a bear. And he showed a whole different side of the game that, you know what, being powerful, being big, there was nothing wrong with that. Actually, be proud that you're the size, and it's an advantage, and I'm going to show you how to use it. And under the basket goes that hook pass to big fellow, and in she goes, and again, there's a close one once more. He set the tone in which the game is to be played now. You know, without George Mike, and if you take your mind to Quayden, we don't have a hook shot. Kareem doesn't have 38,000 points off of a hook shot. You don't have Wilt hitting 100 points, showing that he can be balanced. Then you don't have that footprint to go by. The game has not been transcended yet. George Mr. Basketball Mikan, the Lakers' big setter, was voted the top basketball player of the 20th century in an Associated Press Pro. Mikan, who led the Pro League in scoring for four straight years, holds every scoring record in the book. It was a period that, in my mind, sticks as, as Mikan dominating everything. George and the Lakers were, any time you beat them, it was something special. The thing about George was he carried the NBA in the early years. You know, I think with the Minneapolis Lakers, they won five NBA championships. And of course, George was the man behind that. You remember playing against him that he had a shot where he'd get the ball in the pivot, drive, take a move to his left and shoot a shot off the backboard. But the thing about it was he led with his left elbow. And if your faith was anywhere close to that, playing it, then you got an elbow in the mouth and you spit out teeth for a few minutes. In his day, he was by far and away the number one player in the NBA. They called him the gentle giant, but he was not gentle on the floor. I mean, he played hard and he played aggressive and he gave 100% every second he was out there. Mike enforces his way through the center, spins and shoots, and is fouled by Paul Pima. Footage I remember of him was a tall, nice looking man in glasses, winning the championship, kissing all his teammates. That just shows to me he was a great team player, he was a great friend, and he was a great leader. And he cared about being dominant. He embraced being dominant. That's why he's the father of dominance. It was Mike and the money player who played with a broken arm in the World Series of 1949 against the Washington Capitol. And it was Mikan who became the greatest scoring machine in the history of the pro game. Mikan was very important towards the beginnings of the game to popularize it because they were able to popularize him as a superstar. One night we were walking toward the garden to get ready to play against the Knicks. And I looked up at the marquee and there it says on the marquee, George Mikan versus the Knicks. And I thought, oh boy, they shouldn't have done that. So anyhow, we got into the locker room and uh, the guys were really giving it to me and there was no one dressing. And I said, all right, what's going on? And they started saying, well, you got the publicity, you're on the marquee, go out there and play him. He was bigger than most everybody else. He had a wide body. Uh, he loved to play and he was a scorer, a very prolific scorer. Michael was a giant among men. No other man in basketball is as devastating as Mikan when it comes to playing the pivot position. Play against Minneapolis, I studied Mikan. And he always went to one spot. And he always shot with his right hand, and he, and he rebounded as well. So I said, I'm going to get to the spot ahead of him, 
I'm gonna overplay him on the right side. I'll box him out. I did those things when we played him and I killed him to 42 points. It's another one of those George Mike and Dyke. That's a big bubba just going on and on. Yes, Mike and, and more Mike and, is the story of that game. George was a rough individual, and he's the best. He could care less about anybody else except winning for the least. I was a pussy cat out there. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't hurt anybody. The, the giant could move with the speed of a lightweight. And when it came to scoring points, he was in a class by himself. He had some games where he had 54, 62. We had a pretty good ball club and uh, he destroyed us. Like a Michael Jordan, a uh, Larry Bird, a, a uh, Magic Johnson. That's what he meant to the league. Viking was really the substance of the league. I remember Madison Square Garden one night had George Mike versus Knicks, not Knicks versus the Lakers. So we all got dressed and ready to go on the floor. George got up and walked out the door. We all sat there. And he, where, where are you guys doing? We says, well, George, your name's up there. You go play him. So we, we joked around a lot. I don't think anybody can say enough great things about George Mike and all he's done for the game. And look at the face, yo. Look at this face right there. Look at this face. Look. See, look, that's back when intense was intense. You see that? Uh... The Associated Press, in its nationwide poll a year ago, named George America's greatest basketball player of this first half century. Hey, more basketball player of the half century. Oh, that's why I'm all easy in this jersey, man. I'm not the one trying to sit in the game like throws my head in there. It's kind of weird. No, at least the skin is permissive. I mean, anybody got a phone around here? There are, after all, many big men in basketball, but there is only one George Mikan. It's not only his size, but his extraordinary skill as well that makes him the biggest star in the game. How do these look, man? He wore these playing in the game. No strap, no knife. But imagine if somebody's like to hit you across the face with this, though, you know? So what, after the game, he would give his glasses away or something? He's kind of hot. Uh, we spot too many shots, Mr. Michael. We got the uh, strengthens rules now. And you swallow like that again, it's going to. That's, that's pretty deep. They don't, they don't know what too many rules. <laughs> to wind the lane and put a goaltender on. I'm surprised that they raised the basket and put a lid over to it. You got to jump, open the lid, and throw it in there like I was in the crop pot or stuff. The Lakers pull away and go on to win 77 to 69 and take the series from Syracuse 4 to 2 to become world champion for the third straight year. He had fallen hard and lay in a daze of pain. A few moments later, he struggled to his feet. But could he go on? He did. Controlling his jangled nerves and aching muscles, he sank his power shot. The game went on, and Big George went on scoring. No wonder he was voted the player of the half century. Take a look at these highlights. All you see are the dunk shots. Yeah, whatever happened to the two-handed set shot? A real highlight in my estimation is a nice chest pass or a bounce pass. What's with those baggy shorts? You, you need a pair of suspenders to hold them up. When we played, we just had a slab of rubber on a canvas top, and that was it. Come on, chest pass, chest pass. Come on, Bob, think quick. George. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the vid and based on the information you received from this video or previous information you knew about George Mikan, where do you rank him on your all time list? So make sure you like, share, subscribe, show love to the YG gang and I'm out.